Hello everyone, today I'm going to be designing a, a case for this just second generation iTouch. Um, and I'm going to be using just balsa wood, uh, and that seems kind of counterintuitive because you'd probably want a lot stronger wood for an application like this uh, that's supposed to protect it. But really the reason that I want to make a case for this thing is just so it lies flat. Because as you can see, the back of this is curved, so it's not really good for using on a flat surface because it tends to wobble, which is kind of annoying. So that's really the reason I'm making this. And also, I'd like to be uh, just a bit bigger, uh, and that'd be just that much more comfortable. So I've measured this, and it's about two and a half inches by four and a half inches. So I'm just going to cut that out. And there we have it. So it's a little bit oversized. I did that on purpose so I can shape it later. And as you can see, it's not really hanging over because I'm going to make the sides go up. So that way I have the most wood possible on the sides because that's going to be a weak point. So I'm going to have to cut out slots for the buttons and the charging port and things like that. And now I'm going to cut out these sides. I took the other piece off the top here and just use that as one of the sides. So now I only have to cut three. So now you can see I kind of have the rough shape of what this case is going to look like. But I have yet to figure out how I'm going to kind of keep this uh, eye touch in place. So with such a soft wood I'm thinking that on the sides here I can just kind of dent in a slot and possibly pull off a kind of friction fit. Um, and only if necessary will I uh, have to put some kind of cap on the bottom. So I might be able to just leave the bottom open like that just so I can access just a wide charging port and everything. Um, and that would really help with the ergonomics of this thing. So I figured out that uh, kind of the furthest point out of this curve is about an eighth of an inch from the top of these two main side rails so I just went ahead and measured those and now I'm going to try to use uh, just some screwdrivers to kind of score these lines and then kind of uh, pound them with a hammer to try to make a dent so that I can have some nice rails to run this thing in. Well, I found that I don't even need a hammer to, to uh, make these slots. The wood is so soft. Um, so now, to keep that shape there and to kind of strengthen these, I'm just going to soak some CA into the cracks so that it's absorbed into the pores uh, and it holds that shape. And while I'm waiting for those to dry, I can cut out a slot in the top piece for the lock button. And that's going to be way too hard to reach. I'm just going to take out the rest of the top. And that looks like it should do the trick. And now I can do the same thing for the volume buttons with this long piece. And there we go. So that should fit on like that. So now that I have all the pieces cut out, the tricky part is going to be able to fit this in here snugly without snapping the wood or whatever when you push it in or having it too loose which just slides out. So uh, I'm going to just sand these down. I'm just going to kind of have to guess. So just sand the edges down until I get a reasonably snug fit when I just push it together. And I'll go ahead and go back and super glue them. Okay, so I've sanded this main back piece down and I've uh, cleaned up some of the edges. So uh, now it should be ready for gluing. And I'm not going to do anything real fancy here. I'm just going to do butt joints because it's not worth doing anything fancy because it's just too small. Uh, and I'm just going to use super glue again because uh, it just really fills the pores of softwoods like these really well. So. Uh, that's probably a better option than something like wood glue.
Okay, so I got all that tuned up, so now I can glue this last edge on, and hopefully it will work. Okay, so it should be done, or uh, the inside should be done now, so I can test the fit. So it's pretty loose going in at first, but once it gets up to about here, uh, it gets pretty tight. So that's just what I wanted. So that's perfect. Um, so I can get to all the buttons, uh, the charging jack, and the headphone port. And we should be good. So now I can start to clean this up, get rid of these excess corners, sand this bottom off, round off these edges, and uh, we'll have a nice case. And before I go ahead and sand, I'll just put a couple drops of CA in the corners just to strengthen things up and soak into that wood a little bit more. And while that dries, you can start to uh, sand away. I'm going to use a Dremel to cut those little edges off. Okay, now I can just round the rest off with some sandpaper. Okay, so I rounded all the edges off, and I'm finding that it's a little bit difficult to get to the buttons, so I'm just going to uh, file off the entrances uh, and just kind of give them about a 45 degree bevel so that there's more space for my fingers. Okay, so I've got that done, and now I'm finding that when I put this in, I could get a bit of a tighter fit if I didn't have these two walls flex as much. And with the round bottom shape of this, I could put some triangles, some really small triangles, in these two gaps to help with that strength. And those, and if I could just get them in there, uh, that will actually help with the strength of this thing a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just cut out some triangles and glue them in there. Alright, so I got those little triangles in and this case is pretty much done so all that's left now is finishing. So for the finish, uh, I'm not going to do anything too serious or take it too seriously because it's pretty small uh, and I personally like um, just how light the balsa wood is and how it contrasts against the uh, eye touch so I'm just gonna leave it that color and just put some of this Minwax polyurethane on there uh, I'm just gonna put that on with a paper towel which I've done in the past and that seems to work so I don't feel like using a rag So I put like two or three coats of that polyurethane on uh, the inside surfaces and then I put like six on the outside because that's the part you're going to see uh, and it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the result. Uh, it's sturdy enough. It won't, I don't know if it'll protect the scene in the event of impact but it definitely looks nice. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. 